this is our story. It's about the unthinkable. We didn't know what was yet to come. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number... Four men. Take on the challenge of their lifetime. and encountering numerous geographical features such as rivers, many rocks, and tombolos. But this is only the beginning of our story. Today we're analyzing Whitecliff Park. Here in Whitecliff Park, there are many coastal features, as well as evidence of glaciation. <laughs> this is a tombolo. A tombolo is a landform or an island that's connected to the mainland. It's usually connected by a spit. This is a detailed drawing of what a tombolo is. Tombolos are usually connected to land by a spit. Tombolos may have trees, rocks, or other wildlife living on its surface. Or you may be able to find dikes, which are rocks cooled from hot magma. These large rocks here are what connects the tombolo to the mainland. <laughs> this brown and rusty rock is an example of corrosion. Corrosion is a process of chemical erosion. These rocks have been eroded away as the salt water got into the cracks and holes and dissolved it. These large slabs of rocks are basaltic dikes. All right, this is a basaltic dike. The difference between a granite dike and a basaltic dike is that a basaltic dike is cooled below the Earth's surface and is pushed up by the Juan de Fuca plates, whereas a granite dike is cooled above the Earth's surface. A basaltic dike is also intrusive, which means it has much larger crystals. These rocks behind me are a spit. is formed by the prevailing winds, and the prevailing winds cause a long shore drift, and that's why the spit is curved this way. Here, I'll be demonstrating how a tombolo and spit are connected. This here is the beach. A 
It's curved this way due to prevailing winds and longshore drift. This is the direction of the longshore drift. It forces the beach to curve like this. This right here is all glacial till. This is leftover rocks and sediment from past Here is a wave cut platform. The cut platform is a cliff face getting hit by destructive waves causing it to erode. This is a prime example of hydraulic action. These rocks have been eroded away because of the destructive waves. Of root impact. You can see how the roots are going to the rock and impacting the uh, way it's formed. This small cove of water is called a bay. This is a headland. This is how a bay and headland is formed. This is the land. The land is divided up between weak or strong land material. Here, you can see how it's divided between weak and strong. These are the arrows of the destructive waves eroding away the weak area of land. After an analyzation of White Cliff Park, we head over to Harvey Creek and Lions Bay. We make our way up to the Harvey Creek Dam. This is the debris flow dam. It's very loud. Harvey Creek gets its water source from the melting snow in the mountains above. Shot Creek and boulders are used to steady the unstable slope. The dam is used to reduce the energy and flow of mudslides and landslides. It also protects the residents of the Lions Bay area. This is another angle of the melting snow above. We make our way down the mountainside and departure for Porto Cove. We are currently in a maritime polar air mass which carries the temperature and moisture from the maritime polar. This body of water used to be flat land. At one point, we could walk from this point here to that mountain over there. Around 75% of this mountain over here has been scraped into a hanging valley through a glacier. rocks are another example of glacial till. This all right here is actually all terminal moraine. Longshore drift has pushed the larger rocks on that side of the beach. Right behind me you can see that the rock is paved off and that means that the glaciers scrape the mountain bare. This area of mountain I'm pointing at over there is evidence of a glacier scraping the mountain and turning it into a truncated spur. This place is now used 
as a very big tourist attraction for scuba diving because of the sunken boats that are over there. Due to orographic precipitation, this side of the mountain is more green and has much more vegetation than that side of the mountain. This is what orographic precipitation is. The coastline is very moist, so the water cools and condenses in the clouds above. As the air mass moves over the mountains, it brings the moisture with it. This chain reaction causes the condensed clouds to rain. Making one side of the mountain moist, lush, and green while the other is bare and dry. Here, the dry air falls on the other side of the mountain. These rocks are another example of corrosion and how salt water affects its surrounding area. On the mountain behind us, you can catch a glimpse of the horns and arets formed by the glacier on the mountain. Here, I'm going to show you how the glacier shapes and creates a valley. Here is a normal mountain cascade, and I'm drawing the runoff of water from the melting snow above. But sometimes, glaciers move through these valleys. As the glacier moves through, it scrapes away the side of the mountain, right here. The strength of a glacier can scrape a whole entire mountain side away. In this diagram here, it created a truncated spur. Truncated spurs can turn into hanging valleys. and can turn a river into a waterfall. The glacier will then continue its journey down the mountain. After an analyzation of Porto Cove, our next stop was Shannon Falls. main entrance, you can catch a glimpse at the amazing Shannon Falls. Shannon Falls is a great tourist attraction and brings in visitors from all over the province and all over the country. These water features are only a fraction of how many are actually here at Shannon Falls. The roots of the trees have a huge impact on how the surrounding area is formed. So, look at this, the water is clear, which means there's a low sediment load. This river has a high velocity and it's moving really fast. The stream is very steep, which means it has a very high gradient. Attrition has grinded up these rocks, making them nice and smooth.
over time of erosion, abrasion has caused these rocks to move downstream. Here, this is the process of frost wedging. These two rocks used to be connected. Water seeped through the cracks, froze, and expanded, which separated the two rocks. Shannon Falls is a very strong, yet dangerous waterfall. You shouldn't get too close. Here, you can see the sheer force of the water. This is a very youthful river. It has a high velocity, high gradient, and a very low sediment load. Shannon Falls is a great place to explore and get outside and experience nature. Oh, it was just fell. And I got... But further into the bush, we discovered a small landslide. This slide occurred because this area has a high angle of repose and gets lots of rain from orographic precipitation, making the soil mushy and lush. After an analyzation of Shannon Falls, we started our journey to Whistler. arrived to Whistler, it was full of an energized environment. There were various restaurants, tourists, and bikers. Whistler was in its biking season, which meant all the bike shops are open. There was an endless supply of bikes. <laughs> Our next task was to find and interview a local and ask them about their experience so far in Whistler. At first, we were unable to find an open shop, but then we struck gold. What's your busiest time of year? Uh, probably Christmas. Christmas? Yeah. Who's like your main clientele? Probably older people. Uh, older people? Holiday makers. Um, are you native to Whistler? No, <laughs> I'm from Manchester. Okay. Why did you choose to come to Whistler? I like skiing. Yeah. So, <laughs> I came to ski. Yeah. Our time in Whistler had sadly come to an end. But not without one more stop. Brandywine Falls. Brandywine Falls was full of glamorous views. Here, we arrive to the scenic falls. here are all columnar joints. The different layers show you the different times the volcano has exploded. Many years ago the waterfall would have been located over there <laughs> but due to headward erosion it has migrated all the way back here. 
force of the waterfall has been eroding the cliff for years. Behind me, this is Mount Garibaldi, and this is a stratovolcano. This volcano is formed by the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate and the North Americans called tectonic uplift. This giant black tusk was once hot magma. It was once deep inside the volcano, but pushed up due to heat and pressure. The beautiful surrounding landscape is full of moraine and rocks and other evidence of past explosions. Here are more columnar joints, which were formed from hot magma of the volcano. The area contained many youthful rivers. scattered everywhere. On our way to the Jeep, we passed several interesting mountains. We then arrived at the chief. The chief was once a magma-filled batholith. But the batholith was pushed up due to tectonic uplift, and this cooled it, turning it into a giant rock. That vertical line on that mountain is a dike which is caused by magma rising from the Earth's core. Malachite. This is all lateral moraine. It was left by a past glacier moving through the valley. This sparked the end of our amazing journey. We will head back home. Go back to school. and be normal kids again. But this trip didn't just teach us about geography. It made memories that will last a lifetime. <laughs>